Hi. Welcome back to the Great Imposters Podcast. Welcome back. Thanks First for- solo of season two. First solo of season two, it feels pretty good. It does. I feel like a little more relaxed. Always. Yeah. We had, it's easier. Yeah. We had two, you know, two big guests, a lot of prep, a lot of- A lot of prep, a lot of pressure, a lot of coordination. It's hard when there's two people interviewing. Yeah. Like people don't understand there's an art to that. It's an art. It's an art. And we're just, I mean, maybe- We're we, artists. Do we make it look so easy? Yeah. We just make it look so <laughs> easy. Oh my gosh. Well- we are so happy to be back. Just me and Annie. If you this is uh, if this is your first time listening, yes. Welcome to the Great Imposters Podcast. We are a podcast about imposter syndrome, among so many other things. We love to talk to different people of all walks of life who have struggled with imposter syndrome, who've gotten over it, who don't believe in it, and everything in between. Yes. And we also like to relate it back to whatever topic that we are currently talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, before we dive in though. I feel like it's been so long since our last solo episode. It's been like months, right? Months. Yeah. What have we what have we been up to? Oh man, just like living our most mediocre lives. Yeah. Just right? like really just norm coring the hell out of like parenting. Yes. Yeah. That's I feel like what's been going on. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, this is we're both deep in summer, which like summer's supposed to be relaxing. It ain't. Uh, like camp. Camp in Nashville brings out the absolute worst in society. In I, my I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Like having to sign up in January. And then like, I accidentally like double booked Olive for one. So yeah. then I like feel bad, but then also I paid like double. It just, it's just a cluster. It's a cluster. And it's like you, you, a lot of kids, including ours, go to different camps in a given week. So you're, you don't realize every Sunday you're resetting. Yeah. And it's like, like next week, for example, our kids are going to like uh, Blair and Olive are going to go to this art camp that we found for them, which is going to be really cute. Yeah. But like, Andy and I are like reading the email. We have to fill out the forms. We have to, whereas if you have one, if you have a kid in camp for like the same camp for eight weeks, you only have to do that once. Yeah. We have to do that like every week. Like every institution in Nashville is going to have permission to apply sunscreen onto my children by the end of the summer. Every single one. They're all going to have a permission slip. They're going to know every allergy. Yep. They can all like banana boat, lather her up. A-okay. Yep. It's, it's insanity. I've also, I finally, in our season finale, um, you gave me the nudge to launch my sub stack. I did that. Annie did that. And if I've been you, writing so much. You've been writing so much and um, not to, am, not to like take your pl- thing that you're doing away from you, but I have to say an unbiased <laughs> opinion, <laughs> um, actually very biased because we're best I friends, be but like, I launched my sub stack. No, 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 no. <laughs> Annie's Substack. I I need everyone to go read it because this is a dark way of putting it. But like, it's like this amazing, it's almost like, you know, when an artist like dies and you didn't know they were famous until they, they were dead. Like I just, that can't happen to you about your writing. Your writing is so good. Thank you. Yeah, it really is. You're welcome. You don't want me to like die without people seeing this. Yes. Got it. Like I want you to have the praise while you're still here. Thank you. Is that like that? There's so many other ways I could have said that. Wow. Thank you. But it's true. Like I just don't think it's get, like you don't really put it out there that much. No. I want you to put it out there more because it's so good. It's so funny. It's so complex. Like thank you. It's really, and Annie's like way more vulnerable than I have ever been like she's she really puts a lot out there so well that's what I'm worried about I'm like if I broadcast it and then I get too vulnerable am I gonna have like vulnerability well no I mean fuck the cat's out of the bag at this point yeah yeah um, but is Olive going to be like really mad at me later in life knowing that like I wrote details about my ex-boyfriend? That's not a thing anymore. Okay. okay. It used to be no, like, right. you know what I mean? Like yeah. I remember when people like back in the day, it's like that's online, that's going to follow you forever. Yeah. Could you imagine the audit trail yeah. that someone would have to pull now? To right. Be like, yeah. There's too much. My mom actually, when we were doing this podcast was like, aren't you worried about what, aren't you worried that like if Olive's, if your kid's teachers hear it? And then I was like. No, I want them to hear I it. I was like, well, I'm not like confessing to murder. Yeah. Or like. Yeah. No, this is like something I'm really proud of. Yeah. But that's how I feel like people thought for so long. For sure. Um, but it's called The Good Sport. It's on Substack. So go check it out. The Good Sport on Substack. It's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much. I don't really have anything to pimp other than our merch, which if you have seen them, which pretty much everyone in Nashville, anytime I've worn my imposter hat, I've mm-hmm. gotten compliments, laughs, conversation starter. So uh, we have the we have the imposter hat, the banter queen hat shoot us a DM. We'll send you one. And they're 35 a piece or 60 for both. Get one. They're great. They're, they're great. really good hat. Like they're really good hats. Great hats. Dex, do you like yours? I do. Yeah. Good. 
I think people, I, I feel like what's happening is that people don't want to label themselves as banter queen. Like maybe it's too like, um, cocky. confident. It's too cocky. It's too cocky is what happened. But you I should think. own it. But you should own it. Yeah. And then someone's going to talk to you. So just like when you're in it, when you're ha- buy a hat and then when you're having a social day, put your banter queen hat on. Yes. And when you're not having a social day, put your imposter. Oh. There you go. There you go. We didn't even know we labeled them that way. Jekyll and Hyde merch. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, Annie prepared an icebreaker for us too. I did. Um, yeah, my icebreaker is, I feel like, again, going back to like summer, there's more drive time involved in all these camp drop offs and stuff. So what podcasts are you into right now? So I feel like I've always been pretty consistent. Like I've listened to the same podcast for like seven years. You know what I mean? Like since I had Blair for sure. It was when wow. I started listening. I've always been a toaster. Like I've always listened to the toast, Claudia mm-hmm. and Jackie. They're just like my go-to daily podcast for all things pop culture. Um, and then Claudia is a girl with no job, right? Claudia's girl with no job. Yes. Okay. They just, they, I think they're the funniest people and they're, yeah, it's like kind of, it's fo- like filled with inside jokes and like context. So to jump in now Would might, be hard. Be, might be tough, but I don't know. It's always a good time on the toast. And then, I mean, listen, should we even talk about who we just had on our podcast last week? Oh, yeah. I am a huge Trading Secrets fan. Jason is now a friend of the podcast. Yeah. We had so much fun with him. But he's just like, you're You're just going to get so much out of his interviews because- They're really good. They're really good. Really good. He, he asks different questions. You know, yeah. like he's just, it, yeah. he's the best. I can't say enough good things about him. He just hard launched his relationship. Mazel tov. Mazel tov. He looks so happy with Kat. They're so cute. Um, and he's, then- I was just so like- He's he, there's a lot that he's just so like deep. He there's is deep. so much depth. Yeah, so and I feel like that comes through in his podcast too, which I love. It does. No, yeah. he's he's really just like a stand up person. And then um, <laughs> I I love everything Jared Freed does. I think he's so funny. He's such a good podcaster. I love you up with him and Jordana on Betches. Uh, that's that's another one I always keep in my rotation. Love it. What about you? Um, I have been okay. I've been revisiting. I had a um like everyone in America, I had an armchair expert phase and then I kind of stopped. I'm not into to celebrity podcasts. Okay. So I am. Yeah, I love not it. At all. I don't know why. Yeah. Um, well, they're but, all very funny. Yeah. Maybe that's what yeah. it is. So I've been revisiting a lot of armchair expert and, and mainly focusing on the interviews with comedians. Um, but I did just listen to, he had Amy Poehler back on for mm. his last episode and okay. First, is her ex-husband one of the hosts of Smartless? Of another oh, one I like. okay, got it. Yeah, so yes, so those they're both in the same vein, like yes. where they interview celebrities. But um, okay, but so I've been doing like sort of call it research on like how these comedians talk and present themselves. And what's funny is I've been giving myself this hard time about how serious I often am on our own podcast, mm. but they're all serious. Yes, because like we're all sort of like messed up, like tortured souls. Right. Yeah, and so all the interviews with them are serious, funny, but like pretty serious. Anyway, Amy Poehler was on and I realized that Amy Poehler and I are probably like, we're the same person. Really? She was there first. She's your soul sister. She's my soul sister. Oh my God. Like through and through Amy. Yeah. Like she, everything she was describing about her life and the way she thinks about herself and like, Oh my God, it was, it was a really weird episode to listen to because I was just like, Whoa. Wow. And then I've been listening to some audio books, which I guess isn't a podcast, but I listened to this book. That's a little too bro. It's a little more bro for me than Mm. I would usually go. But um, it was called the comfort crisis and it was about how like we as a society, you know, are, are at a stage in life now through like just development of tech and development of machinery and all that where like everything is pretty comfortable and easy. Yeah. And so it like explores the way that our ancestors did harder things and like what that, you know, the way our bodies are made to do certain things. So it was, again, it was like a little, it was a little Huberman-y, but I really enjoyed it. Nice. I really enjoyed it. It's so fun. I've actually been thinking about that a lot. Again, like our kids going, our two oldest who are going to camp a lot and yeah. switching and having to change environments so often and meeting new people and being with kids they don't know. And I keep like having this like anxiety for her where I'm like, oh my God, she's going to like go on this. First of all, she doesn't ride a bus to school. So taking a bus to camp yeah. is like a crazy thing for her. Right. And she's riding this bus to school the first week she had Olive with her and one of our other friends this week we didn't know so she shows up and she's like freaking out and I'm like oh my god am I like the worst mom ever for putting her in an uncomfortable position then I'm like no like this is what life is like yeah. grab a helmet and meet new kids like that's right. what you have to do you but have it's to- so hard in today's world it is it's hard and then you like I don't know we're just such a soft parent generation we're like I don't want them to feel any pain ever yeah yes yes like I ran into another parent 
who sent her kid to this camp too. And she was like, I was so nervous about putting my kid on the bus. And I was like, I know, because it feels really weird. It does. Because they're just going off to this place where I've never been and yes. whatever. And then we all did it and we were all like, oh, this is what summer should be like. This is this is what summer should be like. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Love that. So, um, Annie, what are we talking about today? Oh, yeah. Okay. Thanks. I needed all that chit chat, though. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Um, all right. We we're talking about male friendship, which kind of in true Annie and Joel fashion, I'm not going to say devolved, evolved into like male, female platonic friendship. How do partners most, because of the audience of our podcast, most of the partners that responded were women. So like heterosexual partnerships, but how does, how do like women feel about their partner and his friendships? So we did one of our, you know, I feel like at this point, classic surveys, classic of our listeners and also all of our Instagram followers. Um, And I also did my deep, deep, deep rabbit hole of research, which I'm so grateful for because one thing about Annie and I is Annie is the researcher. I love the researcher, the researcher. And I am not. Yeah. So it's like, you know, get you delegate. Yeah. Like I forget how my tech career, the type of sales I was doing was very analytical and like data focused because it was all about like ROI and so I don't get to use that muscle very much. And so I really love these episodes where I get to like read all of these, like I read like all these fucking journal studies and I was like going through these charts, We're talking scatter plots, y'all. Yes. And then read, and then like pivot table. I mean, there, you got, I should have, I should show it, but like, I mean, I've got like pivot table on top of pivot table on top of pivot table on top of V lookup. It, so it really, I don't even know what these things are, but it's, it really means a lot to me. Oh, I love that. Um. Okay. So we are going to talk about, male friendship. Again, we did the female friendship episodes in season one. It's episode four and five. Um, go back and listen if you haven't, because this, that was our first foray into the surveying data approach, right? Yeah. And we love that format for whatever it's worth because you, the people who serve it, who fill the survey out are you like, yes, it's like, you're getting the, it's not like we pulled like a hundred women all over the country. It's like, no, we pulled our listeners and the people who are already engaged with us. So like, you're getting your own Results. Yes. Yeah. And there's so many podcasts that's just like two, you know, like closeted narcissists such as ourselves yeah. just talking about their own views on things. No, we, what's the point of that? Right. So I'm like, I want to bring in the views of the people. Yes. Um. Okay. So we, like I said, we did a survey of men and then we asked them to send it to their partner as well to do. Um. One of our big, we're going to talk a little bit about why we did this episode. A big why, like the overarching why was that after doing the female friendship episode, I feel like that cracked us open. Mm-hmm. Like we were like, man, this is such an important topic in adulthood. And especially I feel like this, this nuance of like the post, you know, coming out of COVID and like, there's just friendship is a hot topic right now because it's getting harder and harder, I think to make friends or it's like, there's more ways to make friends, but for some reason it seems like it's getting harder for people or people are dedicating more mind space to thinking about it. Yes. Um, which is good. But we also learned that friendship is so, 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 so important to your health. Yes. So remember all that data we found of like how it increases your longevity. It staves off dementia. Um, people had like lower obesity rates. I think there was like less heart disease in people that reported having healthy, stable friendships. Yeah. Like, there's like real physical, physical. benefits yeah. to the, what friendship does to your entire being, your entire life. Yes. And I think that we also uncovered that like societally, especially in your twenties, early thirties, we're really, really focused on romantic relationships. Right. But platonic relationships are arguably more important for your life. Yes. So like, let's shift the topic back to friends and let's talk about the dynamic of how your romantic relationships play into your platonic relationships. Um, all right. And then my personal why, well, I'm sure everyone's sick of hearing this and especially Joel and Dex, but like, I feel like this was another doing the research for this was another like Annie identity crisis (laughs) because I, my whole life had so many dude friends. Like I roamed in packs of dudes and it was never weird to me. Looking back, I'm like, that was probably weird. There were probably some people that were like, why is this girl? Like, you know, the the kids call that a pick me. You know that? No. A pick me girl. No. Dex, do you know what that is? Yeah. 
It's like, uh, but it's not you. You're not a pick me girl. A pick me girl. Like, like pick me, pick me. Yeah. Like, oh, like girls just don't want to be my friend. Cause I'm like too pretty. Like they're so jealous. Oh. Like you're not that. No, it wasn't that. No, it wasn't that. Like we'll get into it throughout the podcast. Yes. But, um, I wanted to dive into this topic cause I was like, why was I always friends with a lot of guys? And yeah, that, that always fascinated me. And then I met my husband and he had a lot of girlfriends. Mm. And so this beautiful thing happened where like my male friends became his friends and his girlfriends became my friends. And it was almost like, it should be a fucking like my best friend's wedding movie or something. Yeah. Like Hollywood hit me up. Cause it was really cute. Like it, it worked. But then when we moved and we had kids and our friendship sphere now revolves around like meeting other parents and stuff, the lines are blurrier. So we wanted to get into that too, yes. around like platonic friend making. Yeah. So stay tuned. The last thing we're going to talk about is male and female friendship. And it's definitely the most like juicy and salacious. So yes. you definitely want to stick around this whole episode. Some hot takes. A lot of hot takes. My, um, my why for this episode and like a lot of credit to Annie because she was the one who really brought this up as a topic in the, in the beginning. Like we did the female friendship episode and she had this really um, like innate curiosity on focusing focusing it on men. And I'm so glad you did and kind of took the lead on this because I don't know that I would have been able to pull out the themes that you did. Um, but my own why within this episode is that I think female, female friendship is like, I can't, I don't know where I'm, I don't know where I'm going to rank it, but it's among, <laughs> it's among the most important thing in my life. Okay. Hands yeah. down. Like yeah. my, my relationships with other women are like, I don't want to say it's up there with like marriage and kids, but like, yeah, it is. Yeah. It's well, like, it is. And the research, you know? again, the research is saying like, it should be. It should be. So it's so, it's so paramount to me. And my husband and I are very similar in that regard. Mm -hmm. Whereas like Chad is, so, we are both highly, highly social beings. And they're the people that you meet at a resort on vacation. Yes. And, and we you become friends with them. No, literally there are people who are probably listening to this that we yeah. met on vacation that we're friends with. Yeah. Yes. Because we're both like that. Like we just love to like chop it up with people. Like yes. it's fun. Yes. And that makes it sound like we don't like each other. We do. But they also no. like each other. Yeah. And we're not swingers. Either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good. That's a good, good nuance to point out. We should, we, we should didn't get even get that. into that. Yeah. In our, yeah. We should get into swingers. Okay. Oh. Go on. So, but yeah, we are both so social and we view, we both have such a strong emphasis on friendship. Mm -hmm. Whereas like, and I don't mean to like say that my husband has more like of a feminine quality there. Cause that's like, I don't want to demean him in that way if I right. can, but he does, he has a really strong, deep, um, like feeling towards his male friendships and just all relationships. He makes connection very he easily. Does. He's a really, mm -hmm. he's a connector. And I have other male friends who are like him as well in that way. So I, I, in my own house, like we both are put friendship very, very high on our priority list in our yeah. own lives. I also think that female friendship gets this bad rap sometimes where it's like catty bitchy. Like, you know, you think about a bachelor party versus a bachelorette party. And like, as just like a silly example of like what goes into it versus silly. right. <laughs> and like where it's like, there's all this like drama versus like dudes just show up and yeah. drink beer and it's fine. But I feel like women have a level of fulfillment because of the female friendships yeah. that most men don't. Yeah. And I don't think that's a good thing. Like I actually yeah. think m mental health, longevity, all the things we talked about would be so much better off. Yes. If men viewed friendships more like women do. Yes. That's my why. Oh, love it. And you said that part about like, you didn't want to demean your husband for seeking kind of more depth and connection than maybe the average male or something. Yeah. I guess I didn't want to make him sound emo, you know, right. but, but, he, that's he, he, but he is, but that's yeah. what's so interesting is like, I know so many men like that yeah. now who are like coming out of the emo closet. Like I'm like, <laughs> no, actually I like to have deep talks, yes. but societally we're weird about that. Yes. Like even my husband would probably prefer, you know, quality over quantity for sure. He's never ran with a pack of dudes. Right. Cause he like wasn't in a fraternity. He likes sports, but he's not obsessed with sports. Right. Like he knows, you know, every player of the Seahawks, but he doesn't really care about like the preseason game. That's so right? good for you. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I actually love that about my husband's the same way, even though he is very into sports. But like yeah. if we had a really good plan on a Sunday, he would, he yes. would, he's not sitting at home in front of the TV watching. If you know, like, you know yes. what I mean? It's like, you can just watch it on your phone and yes. catch up on the score. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's the big piece of like, my husband doesn't golf. So there's this, right. there's this like 
I don't know. Maybe it's more of a thing in the South too. You know, we love to get in the region, the mm, regional breakdowns. We love the regional breakdowns. But like there's a stigma around like those guys that don't have the traditional means of making friends. Right. You know, um, I feel like Dex, I feel like you're kind of a unicorn. Like you can do like the deep male friendship, but you can also do the like the surface bros hanging. Yeah, absolutely. It's, De- it's just, just so you know, Dex has a, we, we mic'd Dex I got up mic'd for this. Up today. Yeah. Because and we we're didn't like, give him any time to prepare. We so. gave him no time to prepare. We're like, you need a mic because we're going to be like, a, like calling, calling in just yeah. to like, Hey, can you validate this as a man? <laughs> I've yeah. just always been around people. And I think like me coming up and moving from school to school helps a lot with just being a lot more open to many different kinds of people. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, you like, moved around a lot as a kid. Your episode, the episode with you, um, episode seven uh, or 11. Oh, way later than that. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, I don't know, guys. Go find it. But uh, when you when you talked about moving so much and like the adversity of that as a kid, and then I when I, the first time I ever met you, I was like, this is the easiest human to talk to in the history of the world. And so then I was very much like, oh. That's, that's a product so, of, yeah. It's a product of that adversity which is great. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's, See, we could talk. I know. We could talk forever. We're being banter queens. We are. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about the research because you know I love this shit. Yes. All in all, like the biggest takeaways of the research were that men seek friendship through shared interests and activities. Yes. That's what they want. They, like this really echoed in in the data that we got back from the survey too. Like they want to find friends that they can do activities with, that they share like a common interest in and they want frequency in doing that activity together. Like golf every Sunday. Yes. Yeah. Which is exactly why like intermural, intermural, mural, intermural. Mural. Mural. <laughs> yeah. Did you say intermural? Intermural. Yeah. <laughs> Also, there's that there's that smoker's laugh from someone who's never smoked yeah. that came out. Um, intermural sport, intermural. Fuck it. You got are this. great for men because they're like, okay, every Wednesday I go play volleyball with my bros. Right. And they and the the research says that like that is fulfilling. Mm-hmm. That is enough. Whereas if a woman was on a team like that, I mean, and we're generalizing, of course, but the research also says if women were on a team like that, they'd be like, okay, we played volleyball and now I want to go get drinks because I want to chit chat. Yes. I want to connect. Yes. But men are like open, shut, volleyball, done, bros. Yeah. Yeah. It's different. That's so true. Yes. Um, oh my God. That, that's so funny. Cause the other day someone was like, do you want to like learn to do golf or tennis? I'm like, Oh God, no. <laughs> I asked you though. I want to learn Mahjong. Mahjong. No, I don't Please. either. It's fine. I think it's we should so start- complicated. Do you know that? No, it's really like it's- complicated. I like, I was there one time. I like watched people doing Mahjong. Yeah. And I was like, I'm out. Like immediately. Really? It's so, it's so much. Okay. Maybe we can work. find like a Bunko league. Have you ever heard of Bunko? I'm not a game gal. See, this is where my identity crisis comes in because yeah. I am like a dude. I want to have like a Mahjong league. I, a Mahjong. God. Ugh. It's too stressful. Like I don't like winning and losing. Like it's like. I'm a dude. I want to be are. on a volleyball team. I want to like, um, I want to be on a Bunko league. Like I want to, I want to have a scheduled activity that we all do together and we laugh and I get to sit there and like practice my bits on people unknowingly. Well, that's fun. Okay. But like, that's what I want. Let's table that. And we're going to talk about that later. And we'll tell you, we'll tell you all what we decide. Okay, fine. Okay. Um, all right. Another big theme is that men tend to view these hangouts of any sort as an escape. They're not hanging out with other dudes looking for connection. Like they are getting the the research and all these different journal studies showed that men get their their empathy, their connection, their sort of emotional cup filled from the women in their lives. Mm. Like whether that's your wife, your girlfriend, they even said like many men list their mom, their sister, women. Like yeah. they view those female relationships as the place where they go and get that emotional part of their brain fulfilled. And then their escape is is, hanging with the bros. Is hanging with the bros. Yeah. Which is why, you know, there's like, I feel like there's a lot of memes and stuff about this right now where like your your husband or whatever will go hang out with his friends and one of the friends will be getting, one of the friends is getting a divorce with one of your girlfriends and you'll come back and you'll be like, how was Billy? And your husband will be like, fine. Yeah. He, he, had, a, he had a great game. And yeah. then you're like, did he say anything about the divorce? Yeah. And the husband's like, no, we didn't talk about it. And you're like, what the fuck? This is the most central. Like, what did you even bring up? What? It's like the only thing going on in his life. Yes. Yeah. Whereas, and again, not to generalize, but like 
if one of our friends is going to divorce, it would be like, every, gather the troops. Yep, let's go. Get the like, get the drinks. Let's go. Let's cry. Like yep. how many times? That's a good example. How many times have we all gone to drinks and cried at the table? Every time. Every time. Every time we go. <laughs> like I don't think we're Dylan's allowed. Laughing at us. Yeah, I don't think we're allowed back at a piece. No, we're not. In 12 South. We're definitely not. Because we had so many martinis, they ran out of olives. And also that place that it's also like a bad portion size to it's bird food. It, yeah, it's bird food plus heavy, heavy drinks. Yeah. yeah. We were crying and drank all of ate all of their martini olives. Yeah. Anyway, that's not gonna happen with dudes. No. And so what we found though too in our data, especially from the the partner responses, is that Oftentimes we project that onto men though. We're like, well, who are you connecting with? Yeah. Well, if you didn't talk about their divorce, what are you talking about? If you didn't have seven martinis and cry, I think ex- seven's an exaggeration, hopefully, but like, what did you do? Did yeah. you have fun? And they're just like, sure. Yeah. We had a great time. But it's also never like, yeah, like, yeah, it was great. Where it's like, for us, we're like, that was the best night of my life. Yeah. Right. Every time I'm like, that was so fun. I yeah. think we're going to do it once a week Yeah. and we're going to change venues and have a theme. Yep. You know? And also same with like trips trips are that on steroids like yeah chad will go on a golf trip or a boys trip and he'll come back yeah it was great like it was yeah. great yeah and i'm like that was the best weekend of my life right yeah like still to this day and i very very confidently don't believe anything uh illicit happened but like i don't know what the fuck my husband and his friends did on the bachelor on his bachelor party yeah like the only story that came back from it was like yeah did you know that shake shack sells wine crafts <laughs> and i was like Wow. He was like, yeah. So we all yeah, had you a, guys went yeah. nuts. <laughs> so they had carafes of wine at Shake Shack. That's all I know. That's hilarious. Yeah. So it's an escape more than it's this like seeking connection point. Um, they're also, they're more likely to seek it from their mu- from women in their lives like you talked about. Okay. And then here's one that again, I don't want to generalize, but statistically male friendships are less drama. I think that's fair. That's like totally... Yeah understandable. Yeah. They tend to invest emotionally much less in their friendships. I'll tell you why. Okay. I think it's because guys just straight up call each other out on shit. So then there leaves a lot less room for drama Mm. because there's a lot more just out on the table. Like if my friends are idiots, you're going to tell them, I tell them they're idiots right away. Okay. Versus like the majority of girls that I know, We'll just talk shit about the other girl and never say anything to their face. That's a good point. Yeah. Or have an intervention or something. Yeah. yeah. Yes. But then the woman is always blindsided because she's like, I had no idea. And yeah. then suddenly you're sitting around a table. I intervened on someone in high school. I thought that was appropriate. Yeah. My arch nemesis who's going to the bachelorette party. <laughs> we had an intervention on her. I don't know. I don't think she'll. I'll stop. But yeah, that's so women will be like, you're at this table, Joelle, because we think that whatever. And then you're like, why didn't you ever just casually bring this up? Mm -hmm. I want, this is my plea. Like I want women to stop doing that. Yeah. I want women to stop doing that. Yes. Read. Okay. There's a book, radical candor. It's really annoying. Like for someone who doesn't read, you know, a lot of books. (laughs) (laughs) See, like that was a dude. That was a dude moment. Well, that's why we, but we do that. You and I do that. Yes. That's what I was going to say. And, um, but this book, Radical Candor, I had to read it. I had to read a lot of books in corporate America. Mm, Microsoft's ew. big Ugh, on the books. I hate that. Microsoft's big on books. They got oh the money God. to ship one fucking book to every employee. So um, Radical Candor is a good one. How to have hard conversations mm-hmm. appropriately. Yep. Read it, women. Stop talking shit about each other. If you have a problem with someone and then you go and talk behind their back to other people, you plant the seed in those women's head that there's a problem with that woman and then it festers and then it grows and it's like it's like a you know, a fungus. And then if you never give that woman the opportunity to explain herself or change, that's shitty. Yeah, definitely. I think Dex, that's a good point. Like it comes down a lot to the communication style, but I also to give women more credit in this particular part of the research, which going back to is that the dramatic part of it Yeah, is there's more drama also because there's more at stake. Yeah. There's female friendships are higher stake because we care more. We care more about connection. This all, this is all like, very like full circle. Yeah. Like if there's not that much to lose in a male friendship, because all you talk about is beer and sports, Mm -hmm. it's a, it's a, it's a, um, lower fall from, from where it was. So I think that's another perspective is that like, we love, we love so hard and we connect so hard. Like I would never change being a woman. That's for sure. Yeah. Ditto. That's why I'm like really struggling. Cause again, I'm like, 
I don't want like my husband to listen to this and think like I'm about to go through like my sexual sexual orientation confusion midlife crisis or something. Yeah. I have no confusion. Yeah. But like there are so many parts of my life where I acted like a dude. Yeah. And I'm like, I have a lot to talk about in therapy. I'm going to call my mom after this and be like, what was going on? I didn't know that tomboys just grew up and stayed tomboys, you know? Mm, yeah. But some they do. do. Some do. Um, okay. What are all their, what are other good themes? Let's see. Oh, this was an interesting one. So men are interested, like we said, connecting on like interests and activities, but they also want alignment in like social status and they want alignment maybe in like profession. Mm -hmm. So again, they're looking for similarities that make it just like easy to make friends and be friends and stay on the surface. Yep. Whereas women are like, I want your values to align with mine. Yes. I want your sense of humor to be my type. I want you to be at a place in your life that we can connect on. Like I want your emotional aptitude to be where I need it. Like we're looking for like a, like a partnership really. Yes. And then what's interesting from our responses is like most men and their partners responded that a lot of dudes friends are from childhood or college. And I thought this was so interesting because that's true. Like my, even my husband's girlfriends were from college, but women, as we grow and change and evolve, and we know like when we, especially if we become parents, we get very different. We're not really able to stay friends with someone if they've changed in a way we don't like. Right. We can't not bring it up or we do what we just talked about where we don't bring it up with them. We bring it up with everyone else. Right. So let's use a really extreme example that I think would resonate. Okay. That would be accurate. This actually happened to one of my like peripheral college friends. So you've got all this big group of college friends. One of them goes off and like accidentally joins a cult in Northern California. Casual. <laughs> Dude. Accidentally. As one does. <laughs> he did. He literally, he literally like, this, oh, was he. A, this was a friend of a friend. Yeah. A male. A male. Okay. So this is me. I'm, well, I'm like peripherally friends with him, but he accidentally joins a cult. My other dude friends are like, yeah, he just kind of found himself in a cult. And I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? You know, like, I'm like, that's no. Or go stop it. Go stop it. Yeah. Go intervene. He's in a cult. Like, you know, and, and then I saw him at a party like years later and I can't not be like, how are your cult years? Right. Whereas the dudes are just like <laughs> not going to talk about it. Right. So like if, if a guy, or maybe let's take po politics. Like I know so many men who have like friends that are on a very opposite political spectrum. I, Dex, growing up in the Midwest, I imagine you have some relationships. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you just don't talk about it. We do, but Ooh. it's basically just like, I, it's not educated conversations. Okay. Mm. Like, it's just, you're an idiot for thinking this, and then that's the end of it. Okay. And then you just kind of go your different ways. See, like, I don't, a lot of women can't really do that. Uh, yeah, I think that's probably true. I would like to put a feather in my cap that I can. Yeah, you for can. Sure. You can. You yeah. can have hard, hard uh, opposing viewpoint conversations. Yeah. I feel like I'm probably very different from other guys in this topic because I just don't. Ignore it. Yeah. Yeah. Like I will just pass over it and be like, okay, yeah, we're just going to move on to something else here. Yeah. Okay. Versus a lot of other guys probably will get into heated debates about it and then just start yelling and being typical guys. But then when the yelling is over, is it over? Yeah. That's so Neat. Like they're not going to not be friends just because <laughs> this guy likes this person and this guy likes the other one. Yeah. But we like women more often have to like, as we grow and change, like we pick allegiances, like we're just different. Like mm -hmm. we can't just ignore blatant. We can't ignore information. We can't ignore information. Yes. And how we feel. Well, that I think that tie, that ties well to like what you were saying. Like if one of my friends was in a cult <laughs> or in a bad relationship, like one of my, Oh, bad relationships. So one example. of my best friends ever I hope she's listening to this and knows how much I love and care about her. Like she has been in bad relationships and I, I mean, it, I'm like, you need to get out of this now. Yeah. Like I have no problem saying that to someone who I'm that close to. Mm -hmm. Like I, I have no problem saying that to someone I'm that close to, but if it's someone I'm not as close to, or if there's more things involved, I can probably, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. But if it's someone that I like can't and, yeah. and I like to believe that the friendships that I have that are, that close are going to sustain whatever opinion I have. Yes. Yeah. I talk about this a little like in my sub stack, but I, I lost a friendship with one of my best friends for a while because she was in a, uh, a really awful relationship and we tried to intervene and it didn't go well as it often doesn't. 
but now we're all, we're friends again, but it took many, many years. But again, I think like the guy would just have more, he would kind of be thinking more of the long game of like, they're, they're not going to end up together. It's going to work itself out. Like right. there's just more of or like it's a, none of my business or I can compartmentalize yeah. or whatever. Yes. Dex, have you ever had a friend where you hated his girlfriend or fiance or wife? Oh yeah. And did you say anything? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. That's what I'm saying. Like for, okay. That's where I feel like guys are so different. Cause like I will just straight up call out my friends and be like, yo, you guys need to break up. Like, especially if our friend group tells you about like all the times that they're arguing and stuff like that Mm -hmm. where it's Mm -hmm. just like okay this happened again and again and again and again and you're like why are you guys still together like this clearly isn't working you need to just go your separate ways you're basically wasting years of your life trying to stay together here where then ultimately you're just going to break up so like my especially my core group of friends Mm -hmm. will absolutely tell each other and be like yo the you need to stop and move on from this. Yeah. So then how do you guys respond if if you don't take each other's advice? It, it has happened before. Okay. And then ultimately, like, the situation does end up ending, and you basically are just like, well, I told you so. <laughs> I was yeah. waiting. Yeah. Okay, so then you they guys... I told you so. So then you guys go Like, I'm not going to be like, a dick to him and be like, yeah. I'm like, all right, dude, like, if you're happy right now and it's working right now, cool, but... Okay. When it happens and you guys break up, like, don't say we didn't tell you yeah. a year ago, six months ago yeah. to cut this off. Okay. I and feel like that's not what I would expect, to be honest. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Can you follow me around and give me advice? More? I would definitely do that. I know you have the bandwidth right now. Because I know, like, <laughs> in the girls groups that I know, yeah, there's a couple of them that are in very, very shitty relationships mm-hmm. where it's like everybody not even in their friends group knows but like everybody in the city knows <laughs> that like the guy is cheating on them or oh. whatever and they still just stay with these dudes and i'm like do you girls not tell yeah. them that they're fucking idiots like i don't get if that was my friend i'd be like you're an idiot like you yeah, yeah there's no way you don't see this Interesting. but i don't know if the girls just don't communicate that or they don't want to deal with the drama if they do call out their friend like that or are they all like, I think that ha- what happens sometimes is that then you get like silos from that group where you mm-hmm. get like the girls that disapprove of their relationship and will have nothing to do with it. So they're hanging out and then maybe there's like one relationship sympathizer in the group who's still in communication with the shitty relationship yeah. girl. And then, so it's like it, there is a little bit of cattiness, I think it's yeah. like well, fine, we're within the group. Out there. Yeah. 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 And that sucks too. And then with, with this, this friend of mine where this happened, like it was more me from where I was maturity wise in my life that I was like, I can't, I, why wouldn't someone take my advice? Why doesn't she see what I see? Why, you know, like I couldn't handle it. And then our other best friend was very like more measured and took, she's a social worker too. So I think she took a very like clinical approach to it of like the most important thing is to maintain contact. And I was so like, personally invested and hurt, you know, Mm. that I couldn't separate that. Mm -hmm. But the other thing I was going to say about like childhood and college friendship with dudes is the other crazy thing about men is that I feel like y'all can just not talk or see each other for a year and it's fine. I say that all the time, like especially now living in Nashville, my core group of friends, we could go two years without seeing each other and go meet up, and we would pick up like we just left off yesterday. Okay. 100%. So it's so funny because I have friends like that, but where, like, of course, my lifelong friends, my friends who are all in New York, I will be fine if we don't speak for months or a year or whatever, and we pick up where we left off, but I I feel really bad. Like, I don't don't like the way it feels. Mm -hmm. And you've found other friends to fill that part of your life. Right. The emotional, right. like, like constant connection. Yeah. And like yeah. my, and that, I think that's great. Like you should always have friends with, you know, in different stages of life with where you're at. Like if you yeah. happen to be one of those people, I do know people that are in the same town they grew up in. Yeah. And now they're raising their kids together. Right. Which is not something I would have seen for myself ever. So like, I, I don't have any jealousy towards that. Like I love, yeah. I love the route I took and I feel I'm fulfilled by it. But you know, when you see yourself and your forever friends in different kind of, areas of life 
and then you're not in your each other's everyday life, there's a part of you that's like, wah. Yeah. You know? For sure. But there's nothing wrong with it. It's just that I I get it's like it makes me a little sad. It's just yeah. but there's nothing I would do to change it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But it's interesting because like women more commonly, again, like research based, and what we heard in the in our survey is that like we feel closest to the people we are constantly con- we are constantly talking to. Like yes. we need we text each other. We're looking for like advice and community and empathy on every little thing, a lot of little pieces of our lives every day. Yes. Which I think is what makes it hard. Like say your college friends, you know, are all like doing something completely different than you and don't have any kids yet or something like it's harder. I think for women to be like, well, no, they're still my really good friends. When in our minds we're like, why well, we don't really talk anymore, but a dude is just like, no, we've got that bond from beta, beta, kappa. Right. Well, and the other thing, I don't know when we were going to talk about this, but I have to bring it up. This is like, this is me way dogging on dudes. Okay. You know, you know what I'm going to say? I don't think I've ever heard a woman. Oh, go back and reflect on the glory days of her high school basketball team. Or like college fraternity time or like college parties. No, like women don't do that thing where they're like, oh, you should have like, it's like Kip Dynamite is like, oh, I used to throw the pigskin over the mountains. Like, yeah, it was very like. I just don't think women do that, like, look back glory days thing the way men do. Yeah. Like, my high school basketball team, my high school football team, like, we want, we were section one champs. It's like, who gives a fuck? Like, your kid right. is in kindergarten with mine. Like, I don't care. Yeah. And, well, it goes back to, too, like, men want friendships and hangouts to be an escape. Yes. And, like, what's more of an escape than being like, remember when when all the girls wanted us. Yes. Remember when I had to fight off prom dates? Like, yeah, we're like, I don't, whatever. Yeah. Like I, I'm living here in yeah, the present. I'm living here. Yeah. Yeah. What do you have to say to that Dex? Do you agree? To an extent, like I, I'm trying to think of, <laughs> think of a, a woman who's like, you should have seen me. In no, high and school I, I playing like playing soccer. I can't think of a single time where someone has just like randomly brought that up unless you are somehow on the topic for them to bring it up. But no girl has ever just been like watching sports and be like, Oh man. Yeah. (laughs) State championship. (laughs) State champ. Sophomore year. Yeah. (laughs) You don't even know. Even if they played in college, like exactly, Taylor yeah. played softball in college and like, it didn't come I up. I didn't even it, know that. It didn't come up for like years yeah. into friendship. And then she was like, yeah, well I played softball. And I was like, what? Yeah. It, yeah. It's so different. It's so funny. Anyway, that's just like a funny yeah. thing that, that but, again, and, but it's something that men connect on. And it go, it's part, it like makes so much sense for the escapism piece. Yes. Like they're mm-hmm. escaping. Yep. And See, but great. I don't even think guys go and like talk about that kind of stuff. Like I feel like so many guys groups, can literally just go out and escape and do fucking nothing. And not even talk to each other. Oh, and they'll still come home. You'll be like, oh, how was hanging out with the boys? And you'll be like, it was fucking awesome. Yeah. Yeah. What'd you guys do? I don't know. No idea. (laughs) Like, and it was, we just like absorbed each other's quietness. And it's always a good time. Like you never come home from hanging out with the boys and you're like, ah, fuck. Like we we really missed out this time. Like it wasn't a good time. I don't know. We kind of struck out. Right. Or like, or like, you know, <laughs> Billy, that's my favorite uh, character to make up. Yeah. Billy's vibe was really off today. He's feeling sad. Whereas like, I can think of times where I've been like, yeah, well, it was just like, I'm just drained because we talked about, you know, the divorce or whatever it yeah. is. And you're like, ah, oh, that, yeah, that doesn't happen. Doesn't happen with dudes. Um, let's see. What other things do we want to hit on? I think just another, like from our data, we've hit on a lot of our data um, because again, it was like pretty spot on to the research. Yeah. The research and the data aligned. were aligned. Yeah. Yes. But I love when that happens. I know. But I think though, maybe if I, if I could give some advice Go. to some heterosexual couples that filled out this survey, just like if your dude is telling you that he's satisfied with his friendships and his social life, like maybe let sleeping dogs lay. Lie. Lie. Maybe let sleeping dogs lie. Like, don't spend so much time thinking about, like, his social life or, like, is he getting the depth of friendship that you kind of think he needs? Because it sounds like men are going to call a spade a spade. And if they're feeling good about it, they're feeling good about it. Yeah. And if they're not talking about feelings, they're talking about feelings with you. Or maybe you should talk about feelings more with your partner so that they have an emotional outlet and then they can just go escape with their their bros. Yeah. Or, I mean, I guess for those who think it would be, there were a lot of people who said if he had more friends, it would be better for both of us. So if you feel like the opposite, which is you're 
husband or a partner is dumping too much on you. Yeah. Then maybe they do need that. Yeah. There that were, emotional outlet with their friends. Yeah, that's true. Because like you said it earlier when we were talking you um, at the coffee shop, you were like, in marriages, you can't be everything to each other. You can't. You cannot. It's not sustainable. One person for the rest of your life, if they are your therapist, your best friend, your lover, your all your co your partner in parenting, everything for decades. That is that is insane. It's insane. Yeah. Like I don't I just don't think that should ever be the expectation on your partner. I mean, penguins eventually just like jump off a cliff. Like what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> like it's, you have, they're just like I'm done here. <laughs> I'm like, like, where does Annie find this stuff? Like, (laughs) I know. How do you know that? (laughs) Haven't you guys ever seen uh, March of the Penguins? I have not. I missed missed that one. It's Uh, it's like Morgan Freeman narrated. Oh, it's tears throughout. It's so good. Oh my god. But yeah, like they're one of the only other them and like dolphins or orcas are one of the only other monogamous animals. Uh Interesting. No, it's but it's true. It's like one person imagine like that pressure though like mm-hmm. yeah one person to fulfill your every need as a human like human being a human's too complicated yeah you know it's like it, yeah. for the average person like you can't be everything to someone and someone can't be everything to you friends are vital to that yeah i have been this another part that this made me really reflect on is i think i've put especially like during COVID and moving to a new city when my, and my husband and I were working from home, like we were on top of each other. Yeah. And I think I was expecting him to check all of those boxes for me. Cause we hadn't made friends yet. And we were like losing our minds inside and we were parenting. And I think back on that time and like we survived and we did, we did okay. But a lot of people didn't make it through that because mm-hmm. you were reliant on like one other soul. A lot of people broke up. A lot of people broke up. Either relationships broke up or it sped everything up. Whether you were yes. a new relationship, you had to choose to move in together because you had to quarantine together yeah. or you had to like, you've realized that you're like, fuck, this ain't for me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay. Well, should we get to some of the hot takes? Yes. Oh, okay. I think the first hot take is what we did hear from some of the women that were a little dissatisfied with their, their male's social life was that they think their friends are bad influences. Yes. Or they think their friends are toxic. So a few of you ladies told us that you think your husband or partner's friends are bad influences on them. (laughs) And I think this is um, a lot of the, a lot of the dudes are going to hate me for saying this, but I'm going to expose the truth about golf. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I think that should be what the episode's called. The truth about golf. The truth about golf. Here's the thing. If your husband is a big golfer, loves to golf, that's his thing. That's his escape. That's his time with his dudes every Sunday, whatever. My husband golfs every Sunday, uh, almost of the entire year. And he is home by 10 a.m. Yeah. Okay. He tees off first thing. He plays quick. He doesn't, it's like, but he also, he he has a love for for the game of golf. A lot of men, I think, use it as a Social. as a drinking social activity that they can get out of their house all day. Mm-hmm. It should not take a f- four hours. Maybe your husband sucks at golf, but like, <laughs> I think <laughs> <laughs> it would take me four hours. Yeah, Cause I like, fucking suck at golf. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It might take you maybe if they're like a terrible golfer, but there are, you should be able to play in a shorter amount of time. And if you value being with your wife and kids on the weekends, then you tee off at six or seven in the morning mm-hmm. yeah. and you fit it all in. That's what you do. Yeah. And that's, I've, I've never had to, I mean, it's my, my husband's value to be with his family on the weekend, but he also like golf keeps it, gives him a certain outlet, a certain sanity. It's something Mm -hmm. he grew up doing and he loves it. And I would never take that away from him. It was his decision to be the first one out. Yeah. That's like to be the first group to tee off. Like, I love how I'm saying these words as if I know what they mean. I just like, you know, but he's always, he fits it. He doesn't use it as an excuse. And I think a lot of men do that thing where it's like, like, I've been on so many Facebook groups of moms being like any golf widows this weekend where it's like, you know, that's, that's what they do all, all the time. And it's like, put your fucking foot down. Yeah. That's not normal. If you have kids too. And especially if it's a quote unquote traditional, like gender role marriage where like you're a stay at home mom, he's yeah working all week. Yeah. Then you are literally a single mom. Yeah. If he's golfing all weekend too. So also just like leave him. 
Also leave him because that guy sucks. Because you're already a single mom and you can do it. Yes. But yeah, like fuck the golfing culture down here sometimes. Like, everywhere. Oh. I don't think that's just down here. I think that's everywhere. No, you're right. It yeah. is everywhere. It is everywhere. Um, and the same thing, like this always makes me think of, you know, some of these other hobbies that take up hours and hours and hours on a weekend, like mm-hmm. running a marathon or even like like cycling sometimes or like my husband um, did does did, but because there's not really a lot of time for it anymore. Woodworking, like he, when we lived in Seattle and we had one kid, he would take a whole Saturday to like finish a project and that was chill. Like, yeah, you know, all have napped and I had a break, whatever. But now, like if he were to tell me like, Hey Annie, I have to finish this end table on a Saturday. I would be like, the fuck you don't. Cool. I (laughs) hope that like, I hope that you don't mind like DCS coming over and seeing if your workshop is safe because the kids are going to be in there with you. Right. Like, no, no. And and maybe there's probably a lot of dudes that would listen to this and be like, you're the worst, but sure, you I'm, have to make sacrifices for sure. That yeah. you're kind of, and also we're, we're, we are starting with examples that are super healthy activities, which are golf, being outdoors, woodworking, things that are good for the mind that you have to rein in or running marathons, triathlons. Yeah. What about nightlife? Right. Like Dex, how often he's at Dex is a DJ on Broadway. Like how, <laughs> oh yeah. How often are you at bar stool and like, there's like, groups of dads or whatever coming in. It's like, maybe you guys are a little too old for this. Like I don't, a lot. Yeah. I bet. How often are you at Barstool and a mom of three yeah. is coming in at 1230 in the morning with her friends from Ohio? Only Annie. Just me. Yeah. On a weekend like this past weekend for CMAs, yeah. a lot. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, for the most part, it's the demographic is all around the same age at Barstool. But if you go to all of these other bars... Yeah the age is much different and there's people that are 50, 60 out till bar close. Yeah. And maybe those, we have to like leave space for empty nesters. Good for you, I guess, but. And just tourists and jet, sure, like they might course. not be living right. so maybe here and Nashville's going out. not even the best example for like but the no. nightlife thing. Cause it's a lot of tourists, but still there's always going to be mm-hmm. the men who No, Am I wrong? No, they yeah. go out a lot. Yeah. And I think that that also might be what these women are referring to. I feel like it's, a, what we first said, it's like the golf all day because that's how long golf takes. False. A, or and you don't have to come home blacked out so you can't take care of your kids anymore. Right. Yes. Newsflash. Newsflash. Or be like the either single friend or divorced friend or whatever mm-hmm. that doesn't have the same responsibilities your husband has. Yeah. Those are probably bad influences too. And I think, I mean, listen, we're not going to marriage counsel you right now, but it's something you have to talk about. Well, I'm like, I'm, I'm the nightlife person problem in our relationship in my marriage yeah so, um yes yeah, so we can't really talk but do, no i've had to day rate drink? It. i've had to what do you day drink no i don't day drink again you're not like, going to get mimosas and coming the, home hammered no one kid i think i tried it like i was like oh this is gonna be so fun and like you can maybe let it slide with one kid because you can get a nap in or something but no i haven't had a day drink since portugal like when i was on vacation and my mm. kids were in another country because it's too hard you fall asleep i prefer to day drink well but if we have a babysit, like not, yeah, like to, yeah, yeah. To like, but like, you're not day drink. You're like, that's different. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to brunch with you guys getting drunk, right. Coming home, not doing a good job, taking care of my kids and then going back out. Correct. No, no, yeah. no. That I just more meant from like a, I prefer to drink earlier so I don't have right. a hangover. Yeah. Right. Mm. Um, I think we should jump to platonic male, female relationships. Okay. So this is the moment that we've been waiting for because this is a this is a controversial topic. Very controversial. Men and women being friends. I think, I mean, there's, we got so many conflicting responses. Well, what I thought that was the funniest was that from our survey respondents, um, it was 50-50 with women. 50% of women were like, yeah, it's fine. 50% of women were like, absolutely not. And then <laughs> every single dude but one said it's perfectly fine. Yep. That made me laugh. <laughs> Wait, fine in which way? They were saying it's fine it's for fine to guys have to have friends. girlfriends yeah. or yeah. for the female to have male friends? Guys to have girlfriends. Okay. Yes, yeah. this was only about... Oh, you're... That's yeah. a really good point. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we'll go back on Instagram and ask people the, the converse. Yeah. Because I, I feel we, like that way too, like guys aren't going to give a shit. Yeah, I've found that. Yeah. Well, I've always dated men that... I've always very specifically been attracted to men that are not like the jealous type. Same. Yeah. But there are some women that like they love that. And by the way, I've only had like one serious relationship who's my husband. <laughs> <And> so like <laughs> <laughs> Yes, he is not the jealous type. So yeah. I mean, when you grow up in Ohio, you start dating, you know, in like kindergarten. Yeah. But uh <laughs> 
But so we should ask people that after. That'd be really interesting. But so dudes are like, yeah, it's chill. And then like, there's a lot of women that are not very comfortable with that. Yeah. And we, as I was having this, you know, like identity crisis of, you know, how much of my life I've acted like a dude, I was thinking about it and I was like, yeah, it has really changed. Like in high school and college, I had a lot of guy friends and that was fine. But then like when we moved to Nashville and we had kids and as our, as like our, our lifestyle changed and it became more focused around parenting, there were definitely times where I realized I was about to give a dad my phone number to hang Mm -hmm. out with our kids. And I was like, wait, maybe that's, that would be perceived wrong. Right. And there are 50, 50% of our listeners who are women would feel like that was inappropriate. Yeah. And I think it's it, this, this topic is going to be interesting coming from Andy and myself because we are in alignment on that. We both are, are fine with that. Yeah. So like Andy and I are both in alignment that men and women can be platonic friends. Genuinely. Genuinely. Yeah. And um, especially parents, which I, I know maybe could get dicey in, in someone's mind if you go down a certain like thought pattern. But to me, it's like, especially parents of young kids, like we're all in the same boat. Like we're all just kind of trying yeah. to survive, especially if the wives are also working. It's not like we don't have this like network of stay at home moms, you and I, mm-hmm. I don't know. There's just like this, if I was, I made this example before, if my husband had like lunch or coffee with one of the moms from school, like I wouldn't think that's weird. And maybe I'm weird for saying that. Well, that's what it got me thinking about too. I'm like, are we not, do we not have our guards up high enough or something? I don't know. I just don't think we have that. We just don't have that like weird relationship. Well, I don't, no judgment. We don't have that type of marriage that's like super traditional, I guess. Like yeah. if, like, if Betty Draper was having <laughs> lunch or coffee with Don Draper's friends, that would be, that would be weird. Yeah. But this isn't the 60s. But I have heard stories where like uh, there's like a Friday and a mom wants her kid to get together with another kid. And the dad is the one who's home and the mom's on a girl's trip for the weekend. Yeah. And so she texts the dad, can Billy and Billy Jr. hang out? And then the partner gets mad. And it's like, that was inappropriate. Oh. Like, I've heard stories like this. Huh. So I feel like it's more of a gray area. And again, maybe it's regional. I don't know. But yeah. like, there's more of a gray area of like, where that's appropriate. If you are listening to this right now, I'm dying to hear your thoughts. Like, yes. I bet there's probably people like chomping at the bit being like, I need to get in this conversation yeah. and tell these bitches this is so not appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> so like, I don't think it's, I, I personally, in my relationship, in the circles that I find myself in, I am not threatened by that either mm-hmm. way. And my husband isn't either. I think it's probably more common. I think that my, hu- and it might be because I have two girls like that might also play into it. Like, yeah, like my husband is like, he coaches the girls basketball team. Mm-hmm. So mostly it's like the moms bring the kids to basketball. He's the one coaching. Mm-hmm. So he has like the dialogue with them. I'm with our other kid. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah. I just feel like sometimes like, it's just like circumstantial too. Yeah. And that's all. And it's all great. Like, I think there's an, I, there's no weirdness for me in that. Right. Yeah. And then I think back to like when I was younger and it goes, it's, it's so interesting to me because I think like, especially in college, I think one of the reasons why I had so many dude friends was, well, because I kind of sucked at connection mm-hmm. as a younger person. Well, we don't have to get into that, but like I was doing the dude activities with them. Like we, like we all went to this place called beer stoop and we would like get really drunk on Fridays and have a lot of beer and their girlfriend, if they had girlfriends, their girlfriends and stuff like weren't interested in doing that, but I really enjoyed it. You love beer too though. I love beer. Yeah. And then like, we'd have a great time and it was kind of what Dex was describing where it would be like, what'd you guys do? And it was like, we did a whole lot of nothing, but it was really fun. And like a couple girls came in for like one drink and then they left and they were like, Annie, are you coming or staying? And I was staying, but it wasn't nefarious. But then I look back and I'm like, according, what's interesting is according to the research that I did and like the data, men, there were at least a couple men in some of the circles that I was in that, that were construing my behavior as being interested in them. Mm. Data wise. Yeah. Like the data said that women are far less likely to ever think that a relationship with the opposite sex is has an underlying sexual possibility. Yeah. We truly believe like I texted Dex, we met up at Barstool, like I don't perceive anything, Dex doesn't, but there's a chance that the next guy would be like, oh, Annie's trying to hit on me. 
Mm. They're more likely to think that way. Like, oh, whatever. Yeah. I'm, I'm digressing a little bit. But then, so then it got me thinking back. I'm like, so was that kind of inappropriate mm. to be doing that all the time in college? But then I'm like, well, their girlfriends didn't seem to have an issue with it. But then I'm like, oh my God, but did they? Yeah. I actually, so that you're bringing something up for me that I've never thought about until this moment. My boss, when I was like 25 and he was like 30. Yeah. He, he was a young dad. He already had wife and kids. Mm-hmm. And we had a really social environment at work yeah. in New York. And I slash everyone, mm-hmm. I would text him all the time. Mm-hmm. He was my boss. We were all very close. Like it was a sales environment. It was all hours. And looking back on it, I was like, that was really inappropriate that I texted a, like a man, a man with wife and kids at those hours. Right. And I like, I look back on that with a different lens. And, um, so like, that's something I would think about for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, and we'll, we'll be talked, the three of us were chit chatting about this before we started, but like, especially in cowork and coworkers is almost like a whole nother topic because for sure, like I always wanted, I always had better male friends in my jobs too. Me too. Female. Me too. And well, you said, I should, yeah. yes. For the most part, like I, my closest, deepest male friendships are from my career. Mm-hmm. A lot Personally, of mine are too. Yeah. yeah. But a lot of women are very uncomfortable about female coworker friends. And I, I have to tell you, I, I understand that. Yeah. So like, um, cause it's an escape place kind of, it like, is an escape place. And also if like, we're both in, we've o- both always been in male dominated spaces. True. So I think there is a little bit of a discomfort or intimidation thing. Like that there's like a different level of connection. Yeah. So I've always been really sensitive to that. Like I, if someone's, so this is something that I've always, I've actually always had this quality and this is me very much bragging about myself. <laughs> so just buckle up. I <laughs> went, I went to a small school, uh, big lacrosse po- program. Mm-hmm. My brother played, I was friends with like the whole team. Like I was always very integrated into the lacrosse scene. Cause my brother was on the team. Both my brothers were on the team and um, you know, it was just like, I was in the culture there. Mm-hmm. So even when my brothers graduated and I was there, I was still like close with the coach and his family. And every single time one of the players had a girlfriend coming to town from an outside school, like my girlfriend's coming to visit. They would be like, Hey, Joel, can you hang out with my girlfriend? Like I was always, Aww. I, so I called myself the girlfriend whisperer because there's something about me that like makes other women feel safe that I'm not trying to have sex with a boyfriend. Yes. Yeah. Like I've always yes. had, I, which, and I like, I really take that very seriously. And I think that's rolled into my professional life. Cause I have these really, and I don't work near these men. Cause I'm, you know, they're all over the country, but when I see them, they're people who are, I'm really close with who listen to the podcast. Hi, if you're listening. And I've made very clear to their wives when I get to meet them, like I've just always been very warm and very, Do you say like, is there something, do you, are you like, Ew, your husband's gross. So like, what no, if- I don't know. I think it's just, a, I just try to be really intentional about the, yeah. the way I, cause you know, you like, if you ever met, if I ever met my husband's female coworker and she was like a slutty hoe and bitch yeah. to me, like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah. I would be like, have a little more tact, like make me feel good. Yeah. That my husband's around you. Or much, I trust him, but I don't trust you. You know what I mean? Like an age comes at, like much younger too, I think is yeah, a trigger. And that wouldn't be yeah. a thing because of what he does, I guess. Yeah. But for me, I try to, I've always held that really. Like yeah. if I'm going to be friends with a male, I, I want to be the girlfriend whisperer. I want to be the yes. wife whisperer that like, don't worry, your husband is safe with me. Do you, I, do you get a sense of these women like trying to feel you out at first when they do meet you to be kind of checking to see like, oh, is she flirting with my husband? And then like you have to kind of put them at ease when you first meet them or I don't no? even think I can, I don't even think I've ever let it get to that point. It's always like, I, I just try to like be such a, br- and I've also always had a boyfriend in mm-hmm. professional. Si- That's what I was going to say. I so always had boyfriends. I was never, well, I'm what I mean yeah. by that is like in college I didn't. So I was just the girlfriend whisperer, which is really where I got my start as the girlfriend right. whisperer. <laughs> but in, prof- I've been chat, I, Chad and I've been together since I was 21. So right. my enti- any male coworkers I've ever had, I think I've been a non-threat because I've been in the same relationship for 15 years. Mm-hmm. So I think that's like, of course, of course people cheat and are like, try to like look for attention and do this and that. But yeah. I've always tried to be really conscious of that Yeah, because I, I understand why women feel uneasy about their Mm-hmm. their husband or partner going to work with 
women who are on their level professionally. And like, yeah. so I, I, I hold some space for that for sure. Yeah. I've always, I, you, you, now you awaken something in me. Like I've always had boyfriends. And so I think in my mind, I've always been like, <laughs> so I almost feel like some of my relationships, it was like, okay, well I've got this boyfriend. And so that means like, it's okay for me to keep being one of the dudes and following them to Denny court and playing volleyball with them because I have because a they should know like, Oh, she's got a boyfriend. She's got a yeah. boyfriend. Yeah. 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 She's not a threat. Right. Yeah. She's not a threat, but I too have always been this, like this, like I was, I'm so sad to this day in 2020, I was supposed to be in one of my guy friends weddings and I was supposed to officiate one of my other guy friends weddings, both of which got changed, like the date changed and I was probably fucking pregnant or something. You'd, probably, you'd be so good at officiating weddings. Thank you. So someone give me another chance. Yeah. But, um, anyway, I look back at those relationships and I'm like, yeah, I think they were possible because one, I did dude things like watch men play Halo. Why did I do That's that? That's so weird, Annie. I know. I, I like, I don't know. I, well, someone listening who's like a psychologist, please get into this with me. I, I don't know. I, if someone, if guys started playing, I would have been one of your friends who left. Who's like, not. <laughs> Like I would, I would have been the one who's not sticking around. Be like I, I'm gonna go chop. Yeah. yeah. Well then, okay. But then I had when we were in Asheville, we went on a girls' trip. Yes. You know, in the off season from podcasting. Yes. Between, on our break. On, on our, our sabbatical. Break. <laughs> um, and I have never. I've always felt like I'm. Uh, what's the word? Like not threatening. Yeah. And I'm not. I'm never intention. I'm never trying to be threatening. And I've always been like, well, I like talking to guys and I love hanging out with guys, but I'm not flirting with guys. And then it was one of our friends. Jade, if you're listening, who yeah. was like, you're, you are absolutely flirting right now. And I was like, no, I'm not. I'm just having a conversation. And then I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and then it, that was another mini identity crisis. Yeah. You're like, but, I'm a flirt. Yeah, yeah. But can I take it somewhere a little dark? Go. So I had it. I had a therapist recently. We were talking about body image and we talked about a lot of this in the body image episode. Um, and Amy Poehler gets into this in the, in the armchair expert thing. And it was like, this was what was so resonant with me, but I was telling her how like I have such poor self-esteem. I have really low, uh, like I, I don't like the way I look, but even when I look better year after year, I still don't feel that way, blah, blah, blah. And she was like, well, let's think about like, what is this story in your head that you are not attractive? Like what, what is that protecting? And I was like, I don't know. And it's a, this was months ago and I still can't come up with the answer. Mm. Like what's the protective pattern of that. Like if I tell myself I'm ugly, how is that serving me? Right. Mm, yeah. And I'm like, now I'm like, I feel like there was always a part of little Annie medium Annie and now moderately grown up Annie who was like, if I feel ugly and don't think I'm attractive, then of course none of these guy friends would ever be attracted to me. So this is appropriate. Mm. Like there was a, there's like a self-fulfilling prophecy, a self-fulfilling prophecy of like, yeah. well, you're ugly. So they're not interested in you right now. Interesting. Or like, well, their girlfriends aren't, intimidated by you because you're not attractive. Weird. I think that like really has played a role and wow. I'm going to email her after this. Wow. Yeah. You found it. I think I found it. Full circle on the Great Imposters podcast. Full circle from body image to male friendship. Wow. I know. So yeah, I, I love this topic because I think it's fascinating. It is. And I am dying to hear your feedback because I feel like some of our takes might be not yeah. popular. Yeah. Yeah. But again, it is it was interesting to see that like the research said that men are somewhat likely to misinterpret friendship for sexual advances or possibility. Hmm. Um so it is something we do need to kind of be heads up about, I guess. Yeah, I mean, maybe just, you and I you are should, the dummies. Maybe, but I think well, I also think it's like know yourself and know the environment you're in like Yeah. I mean, having I I think people of all men, women cross the aisle can all have, you can have chemistry with anyone. Yeah. And like, that's, that's okay. Yeah. As long as you know your boundaries. Yeah. You know, like there's gotta be, you you can't like live in a bubble and shut off all communication with the opposite sex. That's insane. Right. Right. Unless I feel like maybe like Harrison Bucker, definitely his wife definitely is not allowed to talk to men. Like for, for sure. sure. But like the average, you know, I guess Person. modern family, modern relationship, like you, you can't do that. And no. I, I don't know. I think that it's, it's in, in a certain scenario, I just think it's appropriate or it can be, yeah. and it can actually be really like enlightening. Yeah. Like my, a lot of my male fr friendships. And also, it's also important to know, like I, I talked about how I approached the wives. The men are also like, uh, friends with my husband too. Right. So like, 
And I think he always was really comfortable with it because a lot of the men that I work with are into sports and like would geek out about his basketball career too. You know what I mean? So like that would always be just something that made it an Mm -hmm. easy bridge and they were more interested in him than me. Yeah. Um, So I don't know. I just don't. And the same thing with him. Like he has, he's been in female coworker spaces where they're all like my biggest fans on TikTok. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's like, I think it's just, you just have to find where it works, Mm -hmm. but if it's also your relationship. So you need to set your own boundaries on, on what you find appropriate. And like maybe do we, we had this written down as like a hot take of if you're feeling really threatened by opposite sex friendships, think a little bit about like, what are you scared of? Is it that like you don't feel like you guys are emotionally connecting and so you're worried that he is emotionally connecting with another woman? Because yeah, if that's the case, like that is that is threatening. That is so, threatening like, and that's something to look into. That's something to look into and you need to be able to like figure out a way to emotionally connect more so that he's not like, so that there's less inclination to go to the opposite sex for that emotional validation. Yeah. For sure. And is maybe the secret sauce that like if you're gonna be friends with other married people, you kind of like the, (laughs) the, the guardrails or that like you have to sort of think that you need to believe that they're happily married, like is maybe the Mm. inappropriate move, like pursuing a friendship with someone who, you know, is really unhappy in their marriage or like being friends with another dad who's bitching about his marriage. That's not appropriate. That's not appropriate. That's like, that's the line that, and that's where I'm saying like, don't like be smart, be in the context of whatever you're doing. Like, I mean that like, you shouldn't be in a friendship with a man who's like, it's very clear that he's either like being a little too flirty with you. He gets a little too close, a little too touchy. Sometimes the wife is like always rolling around. I don't know. It's like, you just don't, that's not the friendship. No, no. I think once they start talking about their other p- partner in like a vulnerable way is sort of the, that's like, where it eh, crosses. Uh, yeah. That'll eh. cross the line. Yeah. For sure. This has been, yeah, this has been a really interesting conversation. If I don't say so myself, I guess we don't really have a lot of advice. I guess the advice we have for dudes who want to make friends is like, it sounds like the easiest way to do it would be finding an activity, a community a, spaces, a community, an activity where you have some frequency and some consistency in which you'll see each other. Yes. Yes. That sounds like a really just easy, strong, consistent way to find friends. And also like, get what you need. If you feel plenty of men said, I'm fulfilled, I'm good. Yeah. But if you're not, or if you're, you know, you want your partner to, to get out there more, like there are ways to do that that are not like pushy and yeah. just like think about what would fulfill him and think about the things that would make him happier and make your relationship better. So I think there's, a, there is some advice here and it all, honestly, it all comes back to just communicating. Yeah. And if you're not a golf bro and you're not a, you know, you're not a guy who's going to go join an intramural basketball league, which by the way, I don't think anyone over 30 should be playing basketball. You're just going to tear your ACL 100%. or your Achilles. Okay. Just stop. But, um, if, if you're not into that, like there, it's okay. That's okay. You yeah. can find friends in, in many other ways. Ask your wife for help. She's probably better at finding connection than totally. you are. Ask your wife for help. That's the best advice we have. Boom. Boom. Well, don't forget, rate, review, subscribe. That is the currency to pay us for yes. <laughs> this podcast episode. Thank you to Dex for hopping on a hot mic, giving us a male perspective. And we want your, please write in. I mean, I'm going to hit y'all on the gram, but like we want to hear if you were one of those people who's like men should not be friends with other women or um, what were some of the other hot takes? Like any of the hot take people, please give us your hot take. Give us your hot take. We will read your message on the podcast and let us know if you want it to be anonymous or not. Boom. Boom. Well, this has been Joelle. This has been Annie. And we will catch you next time. Thanks y'all. Bye.